Dr. Morris here again. I want to thank you all for uh, viewing our videos uh, and I appreciate your questions. Uh, one of the uh, most commonly asked questions is the word diabetes. And as you know, there's considered two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. So I'm going to discuss those and show you how to find a remedy or a cure to these because diabetes is easy to cure. But I want to first remind you about the word diseases. Medical doctors uh, commonly use these concepts to confuse the patient. They use these concepts and uh, most endocrinologists consider diabetes as an autoimmune problem. There's no such thing as an autoimmune problem. No such thing. Doesn't exist. So we're going to discuss today what causes uh, blood sugar problems both hypo, hyper, and the two types of hyperglycemia, which is diabetes. And it's important that you review the four-part series on the great lymphatic system, what causes diseases, because it's important for you to understand the lymphatic system and the two sides of chemistry. Because except for genetic memories, how you weaken the cells of your body is through the two major fluids that control the health of them. And remember, these two fluids that control the health of your cells is the blood, which is the kitchen, and then you have the sewer fluids, the lymphatic system. When you look around where all your cells are, and that's your muscles, your bones, your liver, your heart, your, your kidneys, your prostate, your ovaries or uterus, it doesn't matter what tissue, your brain, skin, it's all just a bunch of cells. And two fluids invade most cells flow around the cells. These are called interstitial fluids, simply the fluids that flow around cells. Remember, cells can't get up and go to the kitchen, and your cells can't get up and use the bathroom. That must be supplied on site. And because of that, cells live on this river of fluids, the interstitial fluids. 75% lymph, 25% blood. So the lymph system, of course, deals with the corrosive side of chemistry, that which is called acids. And then your blood deals with base chemistry predominantly. That's the healing side of chemistry. So it's important to understand the causative effects of why cells break down. And that way I don't have to add this to every video. And you'll get a good understanding, this core understanding, how your body works very simplistically. And if you understand that, you will have the foundation for all problems that you might experience. It's just location, location, location. So let's take a look at hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia, which is diabetes type 2. And we'll use the word diabetes, but keep in mind, this is simply a blood sugar problem. You're, and diabetes type 2, which is the blood sugar problems, and type 1, I mean uh, hypoglycemia, these are sugar metabolism problems. You don't metabolize your sugars properly. And there are glands in your body, and we've discussed these previously, that the endocrine glands in your body controls everything that goes on here. And so, important to understand the adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys, which the kidneys control, or are the great eliminative organs of this gigantic sewer system that deals with acid waste from cells. This is where you see all the cancers, this is where you see all the inflammation, all the itises, all the arthurs and the gastritises and colitises and cystitises and lupus and all these type of things. This is the system that causes fibrocystic problems, fibromyalgia. You can go right down a long line, different names for the same problem. And easy to find remedy to these, tell you the truth. People suffer because medical doctors treat symptoms and they go after bacteria which is simply there working to clean your sewer system for you. Stupid, insane kind of thinking. So understanding the role of the adrenal glands on top of the kidneys, incredible glands. I'd get a book on uh, anatomy and physiology and read about your adrenal glands. Real simple, little walnut shaped glands almost like a pyramid on top of each kidney. They uh, partly make your neural transmitters that runs your autonomic nervous system. And we're going to talk about this when we get into type 1 diabetes, the autonomic nervous system. That's your sympathetic parasympathetic. That's this nervous system. That's the automatic nervous system. When you breathe, you don't think about it. 
Well, your heart pumps, you don't think about it. Your bowel moves, peristalsis. All this is the autonomic nervous system. If I suppress that system in you, you're going to think to breathe because you'll stop breathing. That's where you see all these children with all these neurological uh, weaknesses from genetics. They go under surgery and uh, they come out and they can't breathe anymore. Think of Michael Jackson, propofol. These are neurotoxins. It's estimated that 20% of people that go under the knife in surgeries don't come out from the anesthetics, from anesthesia. And that's because that is a high neural toxin. And your nervous system runs everything. In every tissue, you'll find blood, nerve, and lymph. Blood feeds them, lymph cleans them, and nerve moves them. And that's everywhere. And when you get to type 1, I'll tell you about a couple of medical doctors found that should have won a Nobel Peace Prize for this. So let's stay with type 1. Uh, sugar metabolism problems, or type 2, excuse me, sugar metabolism problems and hypoglycemia. These are controlled by the steroid cortisol. And you've heard of cortisol because medical doctors tend to give you cortisone shots when you have pain. A good veterinarian will never give cortisone shots because it weakens the adrenal glands every time you get a shot. Uh, one veterinarian told me that uh, if you give a dog a cortisone shot, he'll lose his adrenal glands for two weeks. So, very important to understand why you don't treat using steroids and hormones or neurotransmitters as far as that concern or digestive enzymes. These are endocrine gland issues and your endocrine glands will stop making these substances if you take them. Not, uh, not the way to do it. So, the adrenal glands, uh, big glands. The other side, of course, is the steroids. You've got neurotransmitters and steroids. So when you don't metabolize uh, sugars properly, your blood sugar is either going to go low or high. Generally, when the adrenal glands are weak, you're going to see a low systolic blood pressure. Your upper blood pressure number is going to go low. Even though we call it blood pressure, you notice there's two numbers, a systolic, which is the top number, and a diastolic, which is the bottom number. The top number is your adrenal glands, and the bottom number represents your kidneys. 120 over 60 is textbook. When you go below 120, you're in low blood pressure. And the lower you go below 100, the serious, uh, more serious the problems. You see a lot of the children today, because of our genetic uh, passing of our weaknesses, instead of us learning to strengthen our bodies or our cells, we, we just pass our weaknesses. So these children today are 70, 80 over meaning they have very compromised nervous systems and myelin sheaths are, are weak and therefore a shot of thimerosal or any other neurotoxin can throw them into seizures, ADD, ADHD, all types of problems. So you want to think about health. So the most important thing with sugar metabolism problems, of course, is that you address the health of the adrenal glands. And that is also going to take you into the world of your kidneys and your lymphatic system. Diet-wise, you want to stay on raw fruits and vegetables. You can have some cooked vegetables. Stay away from proteins. That raises the blood sugar. Of course, all starch, which is complex sugar, is going to make your blood sugars high. There's no question because you're not metabolizing these sugars. The end result of not metabolizing your sugars is not only stored fat, but it's high fungus problems because sugar starts to ferment in the body and this creates fungal problems. The fungus family is the fermentation family. They're involved in fermenting of, of sugars and the like. So very important to, uh, to make the glands healthy. Make all your cells healthy. You're not fighting a disease. You're finding, fighting a weakness in the glands. 